Uh, the Premier 751 or 701 vibraphone. Um, this is a, uh, a buying guide for it. I'm often asked um, a lot of questions about these. Uh, what, you know, what are the things to look out for? Uh, so I thought I'd make a short video and um, show you the major issues, um, you know, that you need to be wary of when buying it. First of all, the uh, the 751 has wider note bars at the bottom that gradually get narrower as you get up. Uh, the G upwards are all the same width. The 701 are all the same. Um, things to look out for. First of all, check the quality of the notes. Are they all in good condition? This one has a few marks on here, but in general, they're fine. Have a little play. Does it damp with the notes off? Are oh, the resonators turning nicely? Check the speed control. The later versions have these thumb wheels here that slow down the fans and speed them up. These often get broken. Switch the motor off. Check that all, but all the butterflies are in. These are not massively expensive, but I do have to make them up. And uh, have a look at the whole are all the note pegs there. The note pegs I do have replacements for, the cheapest way is to do it yourself, um, you know, but these do quickly rack up. So, you know, bear in mind this, it's the single, one of the single largest expenses is um, doing all the note pegs because, you know, even if you do them yourself, they're going to be working out about two pounds each, which is 160 pounds, 170 pounds for the whole lot. Um, speaking of money, the motor is also critical. If the motors don't work on vibraphones, then you need a new motor unit, and that is expensive. Next, we can take the resonators out. Have a look at them. Are they in good condition? Are all the bushes in place? There should be three on the, each, of the, each of the fan shafts. Um, are all these components here? There should be a locking a spacer nut here and grub screws in the pulley wheels at the top. Going over to the frame, have a look along the note rails. Look all the way down the length of these note rails to make sure that they're not dipping in the middle like that. If they're dipping in the middle, then these are a nightmare to replace. While you're looking at um, the straightness of things, check the legs are straight as well. These quite often get damaged. And check the bottom bar here to make sure that that is straight and has no dints in it. While you're groveling on the floor, these springs are often loose. These sometimes, these P brackets sometimes get broken and these things underneath, the little uh, blocks underneath go missing. So just check that they're all there. Make sure that the, both J-bolts and the wing nuts are there. These are the fixing points at the end. Okay. Um, on the structure of the instrument, if I stand it upright, with it stood on the floor, try and move it side to side like this. It should be stiff. Okay. If, these, if this moves, it's not the end of the world because everything's sort of riveted in place, but it takes about a day to sort of strip it all down and, and rejig it. And check this bracket here. This is the main element that actually connects these centre two rods. It should be stiff, yeah, so there should be no movement on there whatsoever. If there's movement, again, that needs to be fixed. Yeah, in itself, that's not a, a big problem, but it is indicative of the rest of the frame needing stuff doing. On the damper system, check that these balls aren't threaded. Take the rods out. Give them a pull, twist them round. Yeah, they come out of the block. Make sure that that, that is not threaded in that, that ball and socket joint. And make sure that the springs, the leaf springs, which is just above this one out of sight, and the one at the bottom is visible. If I grovel this one here, make sure that they aren't snapped. They often go down at this bottom bracket here. These are not available. Um, 
I might have some, but, you know, all these parts are becoming obsolete. Uh, and that's about it. You know, they're very straightforward. Um, check the cable. Make sure that the cable has no wear and tear in it. This is a new cable system that I've put in. Um, and before you play any instrument, um, I would personally, I would, I mean, I'm fine. I'll plug the instrument into the, to the mains uh, because I know not to touch any of the metal components, but these instruments are all metal, so they are all conductive. Um, so if there is an electrical fault, you will get an electric shock. Um, therefore, I would get the previous owner to plug it in and uh, let them touch it. Um, sounds harsh, but it's their instrument. They should look after it. Uh, first thing I would do before when I've got it home would be to open up the plug um, and have a look inside, make sure it's a 3-amp fuse. There shouldn't be any more than a 3-amp fuse in there. These motors draw so little, uh, and the fuse is there for your safety. Um, so make sure that is right. Make sure that the plug is wired properly. Uh, I see absolutely, virtually every vibraphone I get in, I have to rewire the plug because it's dangerous. It's as simple as that. Um, so don't underestimate that you know you just don't want to give yourself an electric shot um they can be fatal and even if they're not fatal they hurt so don't hurt yourself for the sake of your art okay i hope this has been helpful um they're very really good instruments they're probably the most portable vibe they do sound good um, they're not fashionable, so you can pick them up, but, uh, but, you know, expect to pay something for a good instrument.